This is Susan Lucia, and I'm here here this evening with a, a friendly volunteer who volunteered to come get tested for parasites. Um, she's had explained to me a few minutes ago. I just met her a few minutes ago that she's had some skin issues and some uh, bumps on her skin um, that she thought all along might have been due to parasites. She's told me she's been to a couple of practitioners who um, so far haven't quite. Um, figured that out for her yet and so she was interested in coming to volunteer to get tested for parasites so um, I have no idea exactly what parasites or um, or, or uh, what she might have I have some guesses um, but really what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna um, do what I usually do which is I'm gonna guess the solution to try to figure out the problem and so here I have most of the parasite medications that I happen to have lying around my house um, out on the table and we're just going to kind of go through them and see um, if she tests really strong on any of those then that means those would help her and depending what medication that might be that will help help me guess as to what parasite it might be. Um, so that's going to be how I my, kind of my methodology as I go through um, trying to figure out uh, whether or not she might have some parasites and what she might do about that. Um, so I'm having her hold her thumb and her pinky and I'm going to test the strength of that as she holds various um, of the parasite medications. And I could do this with just her holding it in her hand, um, but basically what happens is that her strength of her fingers um, is dominated by whatever is bothering her the most and that may or may not be parasites at this point in time it might be something she ate for lunch it might be some stress she had at work today I don't I don't know really what her life is like um, so it can be hard to find parasites because a lot of times they lie deep underneath other issues that may be going on some GI issues some stress some uh, allergies who knows what um, so the ideal thing for to do um, is to is to do one of two things um, put the medications on an area where we think the parasites might be bothering her or where they might be that would be number one and uh, number two would be to put the parasite medications on the area of the body um, where we think the parasites might be um, in this case I want to actually try option number two um, parasites usually like to be in the GI tract and so I think first we're going to go through the medications and I'm just going to have her hold the medications kind of on her belly. So I'm going to have her hold her belly and then I'm going to have her go through these medications and just hold them on her belly. Um, and that's just my way of trying to get through these other layers of issues that might be going on uh, here tonight. So let's get started. I'm just going to test the baseline with the thumb and the pinky and I'm going to have you hold your left hand on your belly or just right in your kind of GI um, mm -hmm. area. And then I'm going to say one, two, three, hold and I'm going to try and pull the fingers apart just to test kind of the baseline where she's at. So one, two, three, hold. And I can kind of pull them apart but pretty strong and I'm just going to test her temple, test her brain, make sure she's here tonight. One, two, three, hold. Yeah, pretty strong there as well. So that's good. Um, I'm going to go through the uh, worm medications first. So this is Mabendazole. It's used uh, mostly for um, uh, flat and round worms is the most common use. Um, ready? One, two, three, hold. Yeah, pretty strong on that, but not too much stronger than the baseline. So let's move on to diethyl. It's another um, worm medication. It's not as well tolerated as the mebendazole, but, um, but a pretty good one as well. So I'm going to ask you to hold. One, two, three, hold. Yeah, not, as, not quite as strong as the mebendazole, so I'm going to say mm, still pretty close to the baseline on that. Then while we're on the worm category, let's go for the wormwood. So I'm just going to have her hold that on her belly. One, two, three, hold actually pretty strong there. I'm going to have you do it again. Um, hold again. One, two, three, hold. Pretty strong there. Um, let's see, put that one away. And in the worm uh, category as well, we have pyrantal. I happen to have the um, this version of it, not the capsule version. Um, so again, hold. One, two, three, hold. Mm, not quite as strong as the mebendazole there either, so I'll put that one away. Um, 
now we're going to try ivermectin, which ivermectin is um, for protozoan parasites. So one, two, three, hold. No, not really that strong with that one. Um, Tindazole, it's another uh, protozoan parasite uh, medication and also commonly used for Babesia and Lyme disease. So one, two, three, hold. That one's, that one's strong again, but not too much stronger than the baseline. So I'm not getting any of those. Um, this, now we're getting into the fluke medications here. So one, two, three, hold. Pretty strong on that, actually. I actually want to redo that one because now we're in the fluke category. Um, I want you to try and hold it in your liver area, which is liver under. Right. Right. Yeah, under your right. Okay. So this towards me. Okay. Yeah, right under the right um, mm -hmm. rib. Okay. If you can kind of get in there, I just want to test that. One, two, three, hold. Okay. Now put that away and just hold the rib area without it. I just want to test the baseline there. One, two, three, hold. Yeah, so much stronger with that. Try that again. One, two, three, hold. Yeah, definitely stronger with that. Let's try this fluke medication. Um, and again, the rib area there. Um, this fluke medication is called Prosequantil. I like that one better. It's usually more effective against the flukes as well. So let's just see. One, two, three, hold. Yeah, pretty strong. Put that one away. I want to test the baseline here one more time. One, two, three, hold. Yeah. Um, let's try ADP. I want you to try this one on the belly, just a general mm -hmm. kind of belly. Um, ADP is oil of oregano. It's um, more for mold and fungus, um, but a lot of times with parasites, you usually do have at least some level of mold and fungus. So I just want to check that out. One, two, three, hold. Mm, not too strong. Let me try that again. One, two, three, hold. Okay. Um, so now what I now what I want to do is I kind of want to go through what I felt was the strongest because um, now I have a better mm -hmm. sense of how she's testing, and um, I've gone through you know a couple baselines here with her, a couple of um, you know these medications here. I just want to go through my strongest um, ones again just to feel that out again. So. Of, for that, I'm going to pick the Mabendazole, which is the, um, I felt like this one was really strong. It's the um, round and flat worms. And then I was really liking the fluke, um, the fluke medication. So we've got two of those. Um, I got some more in the back I might pull out, um, given that these two were testing well as well. But um, I just want to go through these three one more time mm -hmm. um, with the baseline again just to kind of I'm kind of narrowing in here and I just want to go through these one more time um, so let's just do the belly again just the general belly and one two three hold okay hold again one two three hold yeah I think I'm feeling like that's stronger for sure and on the right mm -hmm. under the um, okay. under the rib yeah one, two, three, hold. Okay, maybe that one. One, two, three, hold. Okay, and this one. One, two, three, hold. Yeah. Um, I'm going to try the baseline rib one more time. One, two, three, hold. And try the, this one again, the prosequantil. One, two, three, hold. Yeah, um, I definitely am feeling like the prosequantil um, is stronger. And if I were to, um, you know, kind of make an educated guess, I would guess that there's there's probably some flukes. Um, and I think there, the, this one is also, the mabendazole is also testing strong, so I would guess there's probably some worms as well. Um, so what I would do, again, I'm not giving medical advice, but I'm just kind of making some guesses and, and saying what I would do if it were me. Um, the first thing I would do it would be to do an enema and see what comes out. That's kind of the easiest, cheapest thing to do. Um, because mabendazole is testing well, that tells the mabendazole is on the CalPER protocol. It's the primary medication used in the CalPER protocol. Um, if you see things coming out with the enema, I would tend to go on the Calcar, Calcar protocol. 
Um, Andreas Kalper is a PhD in uh, toxicology and parasitology. He came up with this protocol. He says it'll take about 12 months, so um, you know, I, I would tend to look, at least consider that as a path. And then the prosequantal um, for the flukes, I would again do the enema and see what comes out, see if um, maybe Google for fluke pictures and see what they look like. Um, see what you get out. If you get worms out, I would tend to go on Calper. If you seem to, seem to get flukes out, um, I would tend to think uh, maybe trying some prosequantal um, might be a good idea, and I think I have posted on the information on the website um, what might be a possible pro prosequantal um, protocol. So, um, yeah, I hope I hope this kind of debugging on the on the fly session uh, here was uh, helpful. We just literally met each other about ten minutes ago, and I just literally did not know what the answer was or what I was going to find until I started. We're testing. back again uh, with parasites, um, kind of round two here, and I had tested previously and found that I liked the way the prosequantal, the fluke medication, was testing, and the way the mebendazole, the worm medication, was testing. So um, what I just did is I, ha I turned the camera off for about five minutes and we did the, um, the Hulda Clark zapper. And um, Hulda Clark uh, came up with this pulsed frequency zapping technique that was supposed to get rid of parasites. Um, I actually have, we have a zapper so we've used it. I actually don't think it gets rid of parasites. Um, I think it actually agitates them and makes them move. Uh, some people think that makes them, you know, try to hide or just move, and it makes them easier potentially to detect. So I, I had her zap. She agreed to zap uh, for about five minutes here with this um, uh, super zapper, and now I'm just going to retest the medications that I liked before and just see if any of them are testing stronger or weaker, or just see if I see any difference there. So I'm going to have her hold her thumb and her pinky again and hold her just her general stomach area. So one, two, three, hold. Okay. And I'm going to have her hold the mebendazole, the warm medication. One, two, three, hold. Yeah, pretty strong there. Um, now I'm going to have her hold under her rib. And I pulled out another uh, fluke medication option. So we have um, prosequantal lexicis and triclob. So one, two, three, hold. Okay, I'm going to have her go for the prosequantal first. One, two, three, hold. Pretty strong there as well. And the lexicis. One, two, three, hold. Yeah, pretty strong. And the triclab. One, two, three, hold. Um, I'm liking that too. Put that away for a minute, and I want to just test the baseline one more time, just to again calibrate myself. One, two, three, hold. Okay, I want to try the prosequantal one more time, because that just seems to be what I'm what's testing the best. One, two, three, hold. Yeah, pretty strong with that prosequantal there. Um, so I would say, I wouldn't necessarily say though that that was too much stronger after the zapper. It was a little bit stronger to me, but not not mm -hmm. too much so but I thought it was worth a try to try the zapper as the next step just to see if we could um, bring the parasites out a little more so we could have a, a stronger uh, result in our in our testing